Hello everyone and welcome to the Rubber Report Player Ratings Podcast in association with Sunday Community Soup Kitchen. My name is Ant and I am joined as usual with Mark Dugdale. How are we doing? I'm very good Ant, how are you tonight? Yeah, a lot better after three points, not as good as yeah. with the performance, but you know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, yeah. We're also joined by Phil Butler. How are you doing mate, you okay? Uh, very good, mate. Yep, yeah, important to get the three points after Tuesday's uh, Tuesday's result. Yeah, uh, hopefully it's not one step forward, two steps back with a big game on Tuesday against Stipswich. But like I say, we will get into that. We'll start off with the three-word review. We put this on Twitter after the match, and we've had some interesting replies. I will say that we've got Michael Bowers go again Tuesday. Uh, Ad Orban formation is baffling. Yeah, I would probably agree with that actually. Cameron Johnson proper missing Hume. Stu mm. an ugly win. John Ridley, what was that? Keith Cowden, far from convincing. Uh, Jer edging towards safety. <laughs> Dang it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> David, like pulling teeth. Uh, it is that bad. Uh, Brownie, season starts now. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> Stephen Stubbs, it didn't happen. Uh, Ross Robson, about bloody time. I think that's uh, referring to the home form. Uh, Chris script past Shrewsbury, yeah, and Gaz Fisher. That was draining. So Malk, it was draining. What the first half was decent. Um, played well first half. Got a goal through Charlie White, but second half <laughs> at home to Shrewsbury, and we're hanging on. It's uh, it was yeah. a strange game. It was a very strange game. You know, we were talking offline before all of the old adages, game of two halves and things like that apply. I was really, really positive uh, that we held on because Shrewsbury did have a little bit of a um, a little bit of a positive s- spell before half time as well. So even though I think the first half was a, a decent performance, I was quite pleased that we got in one nil because uh, it was just before half time that Burge saved the 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 guy who went through. Um, second half, man, did we ever get off of the bus or out of the changing rooms? You know, it was it was bloody awful. You know, nobody was really putting their foot on the ball. Nobody was really, you know, having a go and holding on to possession. So, yeah, v- uh, you know, it's them three rare reviews are very reasonable uh, in the grand majority. Although I haven't really been looking at our points to make sure we're not going to get relegated. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're closer to the playoffs. We're only one point away from the playoffs. And Phil, I'll ask you this. I mean, considering, I mean, how bad Sunderland have been all season, now we've had a manager change, you know, we've not been convincing at all. To be a point off the playoffs, a point off Charlton with two games in hand, Six points off Portsmouth, who were third. Does that does that it basically says the league's absolutely shocking, doesn't it? Or are you amazed how close we actually are? I mean, I think I should be amazed, but after last year when we sort of didn't win for about three months and then almost snuck into the playoffs, and <laughs> in truth, we probably would have had the season uh, continued uh, with teams falling off and us sort of mm-hmm. going the opposite direction. It's to be expected. I think a few weeks ago when Phil Parkinson left, I think there's a few people in our group chat saying sort of oh, we've got no chance, you know, sort of just write this season off. And I've always been wanting to say, look, get in the playoffs and it's a lottery from there and anything can happen because no team in this league, apart from, say, the bottom three, can say that they've got no chance of making the playoffs because it's it's just that weak. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, it is. I mean, you look at it like, obviously, I mean, you look at Sunderland, for example, we've beat the team who were second in the league 4-0 and then we'll go and lose to Plymouth. And or even last week, we went 3-0, a great result away at uh, Wimbledon, who are down the bottom, but you know they're, they're a half decent side. And then you know we we lose to a team who haven't won away from home all season. So I wonder, Malk, if especially that second half performance was was due to nerves, since we hadn't won in seven, only three wins in the league at home all season. You know it it, it coming for a lot of scrutiny this home form, and it was just about getting one over the line, wasn't it? But do you think it was more nerves than us being bad or Shrewsbury being good? Uh, I think I think nerves will be a factor, but you know I'm a little bit um, tentative given them that cop out to be honest, because mm. they'd, you know, they'd normally have twenty eight, thirty thousand plus fans screaming in their faces every time the ball goes out to play, and they haven't got that, you know. So yes, they've got the expectation of the fans, but it's very much from a distance. Um, I think there's it's probably in the back of their mind that our home record needs to greatly improve if we are really going to push for for promotion either by the playoffs or by the top two. But the professional footballers, you know, they should cross that white line and all of that shouldn't be in their mind. They've got to they've got to give it the old hundred and ten percent and all that kind of stuff. Um Shrewsbury um made a good fist of it in the second half, so I think they deserve a bit of credit. You know, it's it's one of them things that they can't blame the pitch this week because the pitch was terrible on Tuesday. Although, you know, Plymouth scored two half decent goals that we didn't defend particularly well. 
um, and they were on the same pitch as we were. So I'm not sure. You know, m- maybe this ugly kind of win is is just what we need. The, the other the other point as well I would make and is. We did win 3-0 uh, against Wimbledon, but Charlie White got two of them goals from 87 minutes onwards. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. could easily have been another 1-0. Yeah. Um, and we beat Port Vale 2-0 in the Cup, um, but McGeady got a penalty in the 90 summit the minute, mm-hmm. and that could have easily been a 1-0. You know, So when we are getting, apart from the Lincoln game that you mentioned, when we are getting wins, sometimes they're a little bit flattering. But we needed a win today, and I don't care if it was flattering or not. It's a good result. Yeah, I mean, getting into that, Phil, um, Mark brings up a good point that, you know, we're, we're just not, we're, we are flattening to deceive and, you know, getting a few one nils over the, over the line, which we'll take, obviously. Um, but obviously with Lee Johnson, he's he's been in charge a little bit now. It's not his side, you know, he's brought the one player in, but nothing much has changed, has it, in, in like our urgency or anything like that? It's, it's still pretty much the same. I mean, I think there's, we're in a really difficult situation regards to the manager because we're kind of halfway between the two. Yeah, yeah, and I think you see that a lot. And I think in the first half, I've actually got written down. We're finally getting rid of like the ghost of Phil Parkinson, and we're not just sort of lump getting bored and lumping early crosses in. And I think we're sort of halfway between because in the second half, we went back to sitting deep and hitting long balls up the Charlie Way, which is what we're trying to move away from. So I think things have changed, but I just think there's kind of remnants of of Phil Parkinson still there. And I think that's what happened in the second half is, I agree with Mark, I don't think it was really to do with nerves. I think it was more we just got stuck halfway between two plans of we need to be fast, aggressive, direct football or, or wait the lads a 1-0 up. We need a win, let's sit deep and just sort of grind it out. And I think we get stuck halfway between it and then you, you sort of end up doing nothing and just letting Shrewsbury pile on and pile on the pressure. I'll just ask us both one quick question before we get into, into the game. The transfer window shuts in eight days' time. I would prospective takeover is still in the hands of the AFL. Are you a little bit worried that we may not get any players in or, you know, get one or two where it needs maybe three or four players, especially with Pace? Are you a little bit worried about that? I am worried that we might not get enough from the transfer window. And the main reason I'm worried about that challenge is um, in the pre, pre-game pre press conference, um, Johnson was talking about, you know, the limitations of the the salary cap and all that kind of thing. And the challenge is, if he can't bring new personnel in, he has got to make this squad play his football successfully. And based on what we've seen in the last few games, we're doing that occasionally, but we're not doing that very well um, at a number of times. So I'm not convinced his coaching capabilities and this squad can play his type of football well enough to get us up without some additions to kind of change the mix up a little bit. So, I mean, you know, obviously George Dobson's gone on loan today to yeah. yesterday to Wimbledon. That'll free up, you know, a little bit of room. You know, there's there's been talk in the news today about some of our players getting interest from other places. I am worried because if he can't get enough um, variation into the team to head in his tactical direction, I'm not sure he can change what this team can provide enough to be really competitive for them top two spots. Yeah, yeah, wholeheartedly agree with you. Phil, what, what's your opinions on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in, in two minds a bit, because I think in January is a bit of a fool's market, really. You can't do anything long term, and mm-hmm. we've got a new sort of sporting director, director of football, head of recruitment, whatever you want to call uh, Christian Speakman, and a new manager who are trying to say this is a long-term plan. The short-termism is in the past, and I think January isn't really the market to show that. Mm. I think... Carl Winchester's a pretty good signing of one who, look, we've got loads of midfielders out of contract in the summer, so we're going to bring one in now to save us having to bring an even more in in the summer. But I think we do need reinforcements. The problem is the big sticking point for between this team and perhaps sort of Lee Johnson's Bristol City is a striker, a big athletic striker with a bit of pace. And yeah. the problem is we've got loads of loads of strikers. Yeah, They're it just not very need- good. Yeah, it'll need one to go, one to maybe Danny Graham or, you know, I mean, Luton did put it, Luton apparently are putting a bit in for Charlie White, but uh, we'll, we'll go into that. Um, speaking of Charlie White, um, we'll go into the game and he scored our only goal of the game, Malk. Uh, a lovely cross by Aidan McGeady uh, and a nice header. Credit where credit's due to Charlie White. I thought it was an outstanding header. Some people are saying it was a fluke. For me, it was a great goal, Malk. It was a great start of the game. I agree. Um, I mean, you know, I'm. I'm... 
I'm not the biggest fan of Charlie White, especially after performances like Tuesday against the Argyle, which I had to watch with my daughter's boyfriend here, whose dad's a mad Argyle fan. So oh, I, had to, I had to watch that with the enemy in the house, you know what I mean? That wasn't <laughs> nice at all. Um, but yeah, Tuesday was terrible for White. Um, I don't know what people expect out of White other than attacking crosses in the box and expecting to score. So I do think... Uh, you know, scoring was clearly his, in, his intention. Uh, maybe it looped over the keeper and, and, you know, people might say, oh, that was jammy. I don't give a shit, you know. He, <laughs> he, he went up for it, he attacked it, he put it in the in the top bins. Um, you know, the goalie um, arguably could have been in a better position, but, you know, we'll take it. McGeady had his, um, his opponent right back in his pocket for that full first half, he was tearing him a new one, left, right and centre. So uh, I think if that one hadn't gone in, it was a matter of time before we were going to make progress down that wing. Um, and yeah, another goal for the big man. What's that, 11 or 12 in the league now? It's, and it's 14, 14 in total. Yep. Yeah. 14 in total and 11 in the league for the Middlesbrough you know. Messi. That's for you, John Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's in there to do what he did. So good, good on your son. You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we'll go from the sublime to the very ridiculous, though, uh, Phil, with Charlie Wake. He then bursts into the box. I say burst very loosely. Takes <laughs> on the goalkeeper. Um, there are two defenders who are defending the line, but Charlie's managed to scoop it over the bar. It, it's not the greatest of finishes, bless him. No, it's definitely not the greatest <laughs> of finishes. That's quite the understatement. Um, I think he sort of just got just got rushed and mm. it's really annoying because I think this season we've seen him actually look pretty pretty good in the box and he gets a chance I mean a brilliant finish for his second goal at, at Wimbledon on the volley um, at the front post and it's yeah. quite a similar position that he scored a few goals from mm-hmm. and instead he's sort of gone full Will Grigg to be honest and <laughs> it straight, in the sta- straight in at the stands Um but yeah, not his finest moment. Nah, but to be fair, poor Will Grigg, his hamstring would have probably torn as he was about to shoot. The the, the look that poor, that Will Grigg's having so far this season. Um, but we we start to let Shrewsy back into the game. Well, um, to be honest, it was Sunderland's own own doing. I mean, Lee Burgess kicking the day was awful. We started trying to play the balls from the back. Far too like clever. Like we're trying to be too clever. Um, you know, Lee and Clark misses a great chance for Shrewsby when he's in the box should score, and then Burge makes a very good save towards the end of the first half. I mean, it was, it was, what was, what were we doing really? I mean, it was worrying really how defensively bad we were after that. Yeah, I think defensively we were a bit too narrow. Um, mm-hmm. Power, Power and McFadzian were getting sucked in towards the centre half. That was giving their, their wingers a lot of room. You know, to be fair to Shrewsbury, they, they had a couple of players who didn't mind, you know, going on a bit of a dribbling run. You know, there was a, the one that Birch saved just before um, half time, I thought they were going to score, you know. But then we should have had another couple of goals. Like we say, White should have put that one in. Uh, Diamond burst through after Ledbitter fed him through. Thought yeah. he was offside, so kind of half stopped. Didn't really shoot. Um, you know, on another day, we would have been 3 0 up 30 minutes in, home and hosed. Um, and then anything could have happened from that point on. But we let them back in. I was pleased we got in at 1 0 for half time because it could easily have been 1 each. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the guys that have done what they sometimes do, which is, you know, get a lead and then rather than be clinical enough to build on it, like they should have done with one of them, a couple of other chances, uh, they've given the other guys a sniff and, uh, and yeah, Shrewsbury were unlucky not to get something out of the game in the end, but I'll take an ugly one nil. Yeah, sure. I mean, the second half, Phil, there's not that much to talk about really. We just, we couldn't get out of our half against Shrewsbury, but they didn't create that much, did they? I mean... Donald Love was trying his long throws. I mean, where, how he's, I don't know when he started taking long throws, like, but, um, you know, it was more so that we just sat back and back and back, let them in, but they never created that much, did they? I mean, they didn't. I think we've got uh, the fact that we've probably got one of the best centre half partnerships in the league um, to thank for that. I think Bailey yeah. Wright a couple of times bailed out McFadzi and especially, who's obviously the, the left back on his yeah. side. But yeah, we just seem to get caught in two minds. Like I, I noticed that Aidan O'Brien sort of dropped deeper to sort of try and help out, but then we kept going long. So it was basically we're just now hitting it to one striker instead of two, mm-hmm. and it wasn't sticking. And then we then we sort of tried to play a bit more in, intricate, and then the midfielder started giving it away. And it was I know Danny Collins said on commentary that um it it sort of spreads throughout the team. You go from having sixes, sevens, and eights in the first half to sort of threes and fours in the second because. You just start giving the ball away and then one person does it and the other person does it and then suddenly you can't keep the ball, you can't get out and um, you just invite pressure 
over and over again. And thankfully, we held on, but um, we've got yeah. the centre halves to thank, I think. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and hopefully that is a very, very important three points come the season ends. Um, as Mel said, um, it was off stream actually, but as Mel said, we're not even halfway through the season yet, and you know we're there or thereabouts, you know, in the playoff. Where I don't think we're close to challenging for the top two, but we need to build on on this win. So the important the important thing is now Ipswich Tuesday try and get Ipswich Tuesday one. If we can win that live on the telly. Put a good performance on. You never know. Um, we'll rattle into the player ratings, and um, I will start with Lee Burge as normal. Um, to be honest, I, th- I had Lee Burge down as a seven at half time because I thought his save just before half time was an excellent save. To be honest, but then in the second half, he's kicking. I mean, to be honest, his kicking all game was shocking. But especially in the second half, he's just he must have gave round about 15, 16 throw-ins away by kicking the ball just out of touch. It, it was strange from Lee Burge. Normally, he's distributions is okay but I kind of give him any more than five even though we kept the clean sheet and I, I don't know if that's harsh or if not but I kind of go I kind of give him any more just because of the fact he, he kept on giving possession away and kept on putting the inviting the pressure onto us so he's got a five maybe a harsh five but a five all the same um Phil we'll start with you and um Max Power yeah a funny funny game from Power because he sort of seemed to drift through it a little bit which has been unlike him at right back he seems to have um have actually sort of imposed himself on the game a bit more there from from in midfield, but I've I've given him a five, mm. um, which seems harsh I think, but I just think it's more because he wasn't that great in the first half and everyone's dropped off in the second, so he's kind of other players have got their scores up early and he sort of hasn't. He was quite average in average in the first and like everyone else below average in the second, and as Mal alluded to, uh, a little bit narrow when he was defended, which uh, which let their wingers get 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 up the pitch and in the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's harsh though, because I've given him a five as well. <laughs> Malk, um, we've got Jordan Willis. Um, surprised to see him in the team after his injury on Tuesday, but uh, very strong, I thought, today. Yeah, I've I've given Willis a six. Like the the rest of the lads, it was it was like the bloody trenches in the Somme in the second half, and Willis and Wright were pretty strong uh, in the second half. They had to be, you know, on, on any other given weekend something would have would have let we, let them in uh, in somewhere there. Um I was really pleased that there were a couple of occasions that he needed to use his pace and he didn't pull up again with that dodgy mm. knee he's got. Uh, so that's good to see. Um, you know, he's th- there were some really good challenges. There's one one header that he he went through one of their players more or less, and then the ref blew the whistle and gave us a free kick for the bloke getting in the way, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. I think yeah. that was in the second half. It was, um, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, a strong solid performance. Um, for me, Willis and Wright are bailing out power as an out-of-position right-back and McFadzian uh, just a not very good left-back too often. Um, so th- those are areas that we may need some activity in the transfer window. Um, but yeah, six for me and uh, he, he probably um, deserves uh, you know a lot of credit with Wright for keeping that zero on, on their score sheet. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I've gone Bailey Wright now. I've gone a six for them. Um Nearly got a seven, to be honest. I thought he played very well today. Maybe a little bit shaky towards the end of the first half when um, Shrewsbury came towards us. I thought Willis was the better set centre half out of the two. He does, he does what he does. I really like about Bailey Wright is the last kind of um, stage of an attack. He's always there to stop it, isn't he? Like he, he's the last, like the last man, and I think he's fantastic to be honest. But he gets a six from me, and um, we'll go on to Callum McFadden. Phil, um, I can't imagine this being very. Hi, to be honest. Um, I've I've given him a free. I think I'm being a little mm. bit generous, to be honest. I thought he was actually okay in the first half. I've got in my early notes, or he's uh, one of his better games. But even though that's perhaps not saying much, but even that wasn't really down to him. It was more the fact that him getting forward meant McGeady had uh, had more space, so he didn't even do anything to have a good first half. Um, but in the second, I mean, just time and time again, he did the same thing wrong. Yeah, and I mean the the first thing that happened in the second half was McFadden getting caught under the ball. Their winger went in, and Bailey Wright cleared it from under his crossbar. And then thirty seconds later, what do you see again? McFadden's under the ball, and the winger's got it again. And I think mm-hmm. there's one thing doing it one time, and that's fair enough. It happens, but surely Bailey Wright's giving him an earful, saying, "Right, get out of their wing back." And then for thirty seconds later, and we do it again. And then I'm pretty sure I saw him do it a couple of times later on in the half as well. Yeah. And I mean, I have a little bit of sympathy because I think I'm not sure how often he's actually played at left fullback rather than left wing back. I know he played wing back last season for Plymouth and he was brought in as almost a specialist wing back for us. 
And I think it's kind of a bit symptomatic of that and wanting to be too close to his centre-half. Obviously, normally you've got someone in the middle, so the wide centre-backs are a bit closer to him. But, I mean, again, that would be an excuse for him doing it once or twice, but not sort of repeatedly, game after game, being just a a totally obvious weak link. Yeah. And it's just where we can be got at. I mean, I mean, you put on uh, the Rope Report website, I did it, you would have had Sanderson in for him, and I wholeheartedly agree with you with that one. He's just, he is a walk and conceding goal, really. He's he's, uh, oh, he's so poor. He's so yeah. poor. But um, I think we were actually quite lucky that their right winger, I can't remember his name for the life, I think it might have been right, that he went off. He got injured, didn't he? And Because he was causing them all sorts of trouble. Yeah, um, is that the number five? Yeah. Is that the number five? Uh, yeah. yeah, the big yeah. lad. Yeah, right. he was a big unit, wasn't he? And he, mm. was, he was giving them a torrid time. When you first said three, Phil, I thought you were being a bit harsh, but you're right. It was too narrow, which I mentioned earlier, but he was also, you know, too high. Mm-hmm. Early on, we were catching them offside a lot. And I think he got a bit carried away with that. He was trying to yeah. catch them offside. Once they sussed the offside trap a little bit better, he w- they were just either putting the ball around him because he was too narrow or just dropping it over the top of his head because he isn't tall enough and, and he was out of position. So, so yeah, the three three's are quite a critical score given the team have got a clean sheet. But I think <laughs> he's one of the guys who um, we're lucky we've got a clean sheet because of. Yeah, yeah. I think with long term with them though as well, he looks like. I mean, he's twenty seven years of age, but he looks like he's a, he plays like he's a youngster just like learning, and he should be. Even if he is so to be a left wing back, he still should be. Surely he's being coached to be a left back as well. Like it, it's just it's strange. Well, they're well, losing the title, isn't it? They're called wing back. Yeah. They're not called left wing. They're called wing back. Wing you do back. have to get back. You know. Yeah. So you do have to be able to in some some sort of form defend. Uh, yeah. But that's enough about him. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Let's well, move well, on. Well, we've got you in a in a nice little um, rage. We'll go with Josh Scorn, who I actually thought was a lot better today. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. He was uh, first off. I gave him a six, probably a six and a half. Um, you know, he was winning the ball back on the edge of the box early on. Uh, he was involved in a lot of of our better moves forward. He was, you know, reasonably efficient with the ball. Um, so yeah, it, first off, like the rest of the team, he was he was a better player. Second off, he was a bit quiet, um, a bit more messy with the ball. Um, you know, there's there's not a lot that we can say about anybody in the second half. So I think on reflection, I'll probably I'll probably give him about a five and a half, six um, on balance of the two halves. Um, he he definitely benefited in the first half from Ledbetter's control of the midfield. Um, yeah. I think that was a you know it gave him a little bit of freedom, and obviously we'll come on to Ledbetter in a minute. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be nice because we weren't very nice with McFaddy, and I'll I'll round him up to six. <laughs> you, you said messy there. I'm taking you mean careless, not Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Just> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's definitely not Leo, um, <laughs> but he's. Uh, I mean, clearly the the coach thinks there's something there because he's yeah. had some pretty poor performances, and he's sticking with them. The first half today, he deserved his place. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think he should have come off a little bit earlier because uh, I think wasn't it all nine came off for, on for him like, yeah, right did, yeah. in the last five minutes or something. Um, but yeah, not a bad performance on a on a not great day. So yeah, yeah, nice, six, nice solid six. Um, and speaking of nice solid sixes, I'll go for Grant Ledbetter. I thought Grant Ledbetter first half was our best player on the pitch. To be honest, second half maybe got a bit tired, tailed off a little bit as shoes we were pushing on. But I've given him a nice solid six. Um, I can't go into too much detail because just Grant Ledbetter being Grant Ledbetter, you know, good performance. Um, Phil will go on to Jack Diamond, who I thought was for him quite poor today, very wasteful. Yeah, I agree. I thought he was quite poor. What's impressed us about Diamond since he came in has actually been the quality of his end product. I think with these young players, sometimes they come in and they're really direct. They take defenders on, they get crossed in the box, but they don't actually sort of do much with it and they're a bit wasteful. And he's he's been really, you know, quite important and he's obviously scored his goal against Lincoln and he's he's actually looked like creating chances, but today he, he didn't do that, to be honest. I've given him a five um, because he did look like a threat on the break, especially, I think, uh, Malk's already said about when he got in behind and he wasted the chance but I think his pace is what, what made it and his presence yeah. what made the opportunity in the first place And I mean he's a young player he's gonna, and if he if he bottoms out at a 5 out of 10 I think we're going to live with that Yeah, but he's he didn't gonna, have a great game He's going to have bad games isn't he because he's still only young so we'll 
you know, just don't do it too many times, Jeff, and we'll be happy. <laughs> um, right, we have got Aidan McGeady, Malk. Uh, yeah, again, the theme continues. Game of two halves. The first half, McGeady was absolutely laughing at their right back. You know, he really was. Yeah. Um, the bloke couldn't do anything right, and obviously he, he turned him on a sixpence and put the cross in for Wyke to, for the opening goal in the first 20 minutes. Uh, I've got McGeady all over my first half notes because we almost got a penalty um, when McGeady and O'Brien had a really good interchange only, yeah. only 10 or yeah. 11 minutes in. It was a really good know, tackle, they, wasn't it? Really yeah, good it was a good tackle, but, you know, um, fractionally, you know, well-timed. Um, but, you know, who knows? Um, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's played very well. Second half... Not so well, uh, and I th- what time did he come off? He came off about 78, 90, 80 minutes, didn't he, for, for Winchester, which I thought was a weird sub, because um, it meant we had to change the shape. Mm. Um, overall, I gave him a 7 for the first half and a, and a 5 for the second, so I'll, I'll split the middle and go in a 6. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure what we're going to do. You know, People are talking about McGeady not being at the club next year um, in other conversations earlier in the week. I don't know what we're going to do down the left without him, unless um, you know we add to the team, or maybe you know Gooch really steps up his game when he comes back. Yeah. Um, so he'll be a big miss, and he, he played well today. Six for me. I'll I'll give you two words for that left hand side, Mark Elliot Embleton. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll take... yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for me, that's who they need to start building the teams. So him, Diamond, or uh, Neil. You know, it's players in the He's, he's two footed Embleton though, isn't he? He's two footed, yeah. so he's not he's not an out and out uh although so's so's um McGeady. So's McGeady, fair, yeah. And, and, yeah. That's, nah, but but yeah. he was a, he was a lot better today, um to be fair, especially first half. Um I'll go for Aidan O'Brien. I'm basically echoing what you've just said about McGeady, though he was good first half. Um, you know, in, in interjected a few nice passes with McGeady. Second half he had to come deeper, which I don't think suits him. Um, so I've gave him a solid six. And Phil, considering you're not on, well, you're not on the players' ratings very often, me and Malcolm have talked about Charlie White till the cows come home, so you can rate Charlie White. Charlie White, a very boring six for me. I think people judge him as a target man. He's not a target man. He's a penalty box striker. He scored a good goal. That probably gets him a seven. He missed a good chance. He can lose a mark. Six out of ten. Ah, right, fair play. I like it. Uh, I like that one. Very uh, concise, Phil. Very concise, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Charlie White for too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, to be fair, we've spent too much time talking, especially this week. We've spent far too much time talking about him, bless him. Um, I'll quickly rattle off the subs. Uh, Chris Maguire, I thought he was anonymous, um, came into it. Maybe in the last four or five minutes, had a couple of shots, which weren't very good. Uh, six. Carl Winchester, I've given him a six as well. Thought in, I agree with Malcolm about the sub was weird. Him coming on um, for was Scowen, wasn't he? We come on for uh, McGeady. Sorry, for. yeah, McGeady because yeah. he had to change the shape. And I do agree with you there. But I actually thought Winchester was good when he came on. He moves the ball, shoots of encouragement for him. And Luke yeah. nine, I haven't given him a marks. He come on a little bit too late, but it's very nice to see him back, and it's also very nice to see him back in an advanced position. Not exactly, at right yeah. back. I was so chuffed often. when he went on in the midfield because yeah. uh, hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Uh, you yeah, know? If, if anything, we should give him a nine and nine just because of his name. <laughs> just because he, yeah, just because he's think come we on. We need to get him up front, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, that point was made on the extra pod, and I actually agree with that. I, I think he'd be in a superb addition uh, just off White or O'Brien. I think it'll be a really good. Uh, idea for that um, but like I said it's just great to see him back um, we'll go for a quick man of the match from you Mark we'll start with you uh, I'm going to give it to uh, Ledbetter actually I think in the first half uh, that might that might not be shared by everybody but I thought in the first half he was a full on midfield general um, I scored him a little bit higher than uh, you guys did uh, but you know everybody's got their own opinions obviously <laughs> I respect that second half um, if he could have put his foot on the ball a bit more and did what he did in the first half, I don't think we would have had half as many challenges as we did. Um, but for some reason, he dropped back a bit and, and they they marked him uh, a bit tighter. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd go for, for Grant. You know, yeah. Hopefully he can keep playing as well as that for the rest of the season because uh, who knows whether he'll be part of the squad next season given yeah. his age and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, great. F- fingers crossed he does. Yeah, fingers crossed. And he's... Got his old uh, old team Ipswich on Tuesday, so he'd be up for that one. Um, oh, yeah. Phil, who we're we going for for you? 
Um, Aidan McGeady for me, um, mm. probably the only time we've seen since he came back that he actually looked like the uh, the Aidan McGeady of old. It's great to see him down the left, just on his own essentially, because you know McFadden doesn't offer much. But that's when he's at his best. He just needs room to take his full back one on one, and he had some end product with the assist today as well. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm toying between McGeady. I think I'm going to go McGeady, but I'll go for Aidan McGeady because I agree with you. And I think once Hume comes back, once that partnership's restored, I think we'll see the best of him um, and Hume, obviously. We'll finish off with Ray at the manager. Um, I'll start with Lee Johnson. I'm going to give him a very, very solid six because, I mean, he must be tearing his hair out of that second-half performance. But, you know, we've won. We've got rid of that home, ho- that home hoodoo. There we go. And um, managed to, to win against a side who had been playing very well before COVID had struck them. So I'm going to give him a solid six. Phil, we'll go to you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've given him a six as well. Um, I think swapping wings of McGeady and Diamond wasn't a great decision because it oh. meant that their, that their right back got forward a bit more, whereas I think McGeady might have been keeping them back in the first half. But I think he made some good subs. Uh, I think Maguire sort of is much better at holding the ball up than uh, Diamond and Winchester again when we need to just keep the ball and sort of take the sting out of the game. So he's gained himself his mark back there with his subs. Lovely. Yeah, and Malky can finish us off. Um, I'm going to have a whinge. I'm going to give him a five. Ooh, and the, the, the reason I'm going to give him a five is the team should never have performed that way in the second half um, after the way we played in the first. So I agree with your point, Phil, and we've mentioned it before, that, that switch of wings. You know, if it isn't broke, don't bloody fix it. You know, mm. the, let the lads continue to terrorise the defender that they're doing a good job terrorising. Um, the subs were okay. Um, Winchester did okay. I agree. I thought um, Maguire was quite wasteful, shooting from like twenty-five yards, like a glory boy, and not really even exercising the goalkeeper's gloves. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I don't think he did well enough with um, you know giving the team the right messages at half time, so that the second half shouldn't have been like that. So I'm going to be a little bit critical. That said, if if we can play the way we did in the first half um, repeatedly, then we're gonna we're gonna have a good game against more sides. So you know, um, I will leave it on that point. Yeah, no, spot on, spot on. I mean, we'll we'll finish off with that one now. Uh... I mean, it's hard to finish off with a rant of a 1-0 win, but there we are. <laughs> it wasn't great, so fair play. Um, the to plays. Exactly. Um, thank you very much, Phil, for joining us. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers, Malk, as always. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us, Ant. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for Tuesday night, eh? Exactly. I mean, a slight side note, Malk, I know me and you do this quite often. I think I've spoke to you more in the last six months than I have your mother. So whether that makes me a bad son or a very good podcast source, I'm not sure. <laughs> so... or, it, or it might make me a good a good surrogate mother. I'll take that. <laughs> Maybe a bit of both. Maybe a bit of both. So um, thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, you can catch us on wherever you get your podcasts from. We will be back on Tuesday with another player's ratings. Um, I would imagine Gav will be back for that. Thank you very much, everybody, and good night.